Welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to walk through some calculations that set comparator thresholds, determine error, and establish hysteresis for our temperature monitor project. We're setting the trip and reset thresholds for our 3D printer temperature monitor, codenamed Seth, and these thresholds play a critical role for this design. These comparators are what actually enforce the temperature limit, comparing the measured temperature to a programmable threshold. That's awesome, but before we dive into our application and some calculations, let's cover the basics. First of all, what is a comparator? Well, a comparator looks a lot like an op-amp, but internally it's optimized differently. See, comparators are designed such that when a voltage is applied to the positive terminal of the comparator, rather, when the voltage applied to the positive terminal is above the voltage applied to the negative terminal, the output is railed to the positive supply voltage. When this condition is not true, the comparator outputs the negative supply voltage, which is typically zero volts. Simple as that. End the video. See ya. Well, maybe not quite. There are two common flavors for comparators. There's open drain or open collector comparators, which use an external pull-up resistor and only enforce the zero volt state or logic level low. Now this is great because it allows for connecting multiple comparators in parallel, which means we can build logic. This means that we can build or conditions and hardware without needing to add logic gates to the system. Cool, right? Now open collector outputs allow for saying, if this threshold or that threshold have tripped, pull the net to ground. Then of course we can make that logic state mean something. Open collector comparators can also be used to shift logic between different voltages and are generally very useful. I like them a lot. They've got some subtle little use cases. But the other common configuration for comparators is push-pull, so that means there's either a strong connection to whatever supply rail is applicable. Rather actively providing the supply voltage or actively providing ground. There's no paralleling the outputs of these. They'll be back driving each other, but they're still extremely versatile and still very useful. The fundamental theory of operation for a comparator is quite simple, like we just described, and this is by design. But when we try to bring an ideal comparator like this into the real world, well, they can start to get a little more complicated. Real comparators get a little more complex because there's a lot of imperfections and non-idealities in a comparator. Now let's walk through some of the most common non-idealities so you can plan for them in your designs. Now, there's an input offset voltage which describes how much voltage is required to establish the correct state. Ideally, a comparator would switch state exactly at the threshold, but maybe we need 100 millivolts or 10 millivolts of difference between the two terminals to change state. Now that depends on your comparator. It's in the data sheet. If the threshold is supposed to be two and a half volts, maybe we'd see the comparator actually change state at 2.51. Now that is always, again, this parameter is always in the data sheet of a comparator. There's also some input bias currents, which are the quantity of current that leaks into the comparator inputs when applying voltage to them. Bias currents can be mitigated pretty easily, but if you don't think about them, you can introduce a lot of error. See, if you have current leaking into the input terminals of your comparator, that means that if you're using a 15 giga ohm resistor to bias the input, well, maybe that's not a great idea. Maybe the current coming into your comparator will lead to error. So just use something reasonable, right? Tens of kilo ohms, hundreds of kilo ohms, it'll probably be fine, but you still need to think about it. Input bias current, offset voltage, those two factors can lead to oscillations when the two input voltages are very, very similar it's because they can be in any direction. Basically, there's a voltage level where the comparator will attempt to change state, but changing state will either change the sign of the offset voltage or bias current, and now all of a sudden conditions are right, so the comparator oscillates unpredictably between the two output states. Yikes! And that's usually a temporary situation that resolves itself, but even so, it can cause a lot of problems. Just electromagnetic interference and coupling high-frequency energy into nets you don't want to, it's bad. If only there were some way that we could tweak a simple comparator circuit to make the states more sticky. If only there were some way that we could help the comparator to not oscillate. Hmm. Actually, I think I might remember something. His, his, uh, man, this is hard to spell. Hysteresis, yes, easy to say, hard to spell, wow. Hysteresis is a method of helping the comparator stick in the correct state by introducing a little bit of positive feedback. When the comparator output is low, this hysteresis resistor will tug on the positive input a little bit to reduce the voltage. 
When the comparator output is high, we're tugging in the opposite direction, which increases the voltage at the positive terminal. Remember, the output of the comparator is high, or logic level one, when the positive input is above the negative one. This means that the comparator, by transitioning from a low output to a high output, has made itself more securely set in the high, or logic one, output state. Make sense? Following along? Picking up what I'm putting down? Clear as mud? Good. This hysteresis can only be set to have one of the edges, either the rising or falling one, be accurate, and that's because we're effectively tugging the trip threshold for the other transition. That's usually not a problem, and it only takes a few millivolts of hysteresis to prevent wild oscillations, but as it may be obvious to some, I still need to say it for the others, the more hysteresis we add, the less likely the comparator is to oscillate, but this comes at the cost of making the untuned state transition less accurate. This is an optimization problem, and the quantity of hysteresis required is an application-dependent thing. There isn't a right answer. There are better and worse answers for every situation. This means that instead of having a two resistor divider, the circuit becomes a three resistor divider, where one terminal is either zero volts or the in, depending on what's happening. This means our third resistor will either be sinking or sourcing current to that divider, providing the desired effect. This might seem complicated, but really, it's not so bad, as long as you do the hard work the right number of times, once. And I used one of my favorite mathematical tools to capture our analysis and do exactly that. Basically, we're solving the equation generally, and then we can plug in different resistor values, thresholds, and quickly find new component values down the road if required. Now, as if that wasn't complicated enough, the output voltage of our comparator isn't really zero volts or Vn. It's zero volts-ish or Vn-ish. Typically, there's about a 0.2 volt offset from either of those. Sometimes we can neglect that and take on the additional error, and sometimes that 0.2 volts can have a really big impact on the overall system. It just depends, and I think we're bringing enough concepts into this video, so let's keep it relatively simple and pretend that zero volts is zero volts for now. Speaking of keeping it simple, let's apply these concepts to our temperature monitor project. Seth measures temperature as a voltage, where five millivolts represents one degree Celsius above zero. To calculate the quantity of hysteresis the hysteresis resistor adds, all I had to do was calculate the effective resistance when combining the parallel combination of the hysteresis resistor with either the top or the bottom resistors in this resistor divider. Now I can do this because we're assuming the output of this comparator is either exactly zero volts or exactly Vn. In our case, we're talking about a one mega ohm resistor, 2.49 kilo ohm resistor, and a 23.7 kilo ohm resistor. Again, it's important to note that I'm neglecting the V out error. Keeping that error in the calculation turns this into a system of equations based off the node equations. We're not doing that right now. At any rate, we're swinging the voltage at the VN terminal of the comparator by 11.24 millivolts in this case, or about two degrees Celsius for our system. That's a small enough error that I'm comfortable leaving in the system without further compensation because there's other factors that are adding error. But just for a moment, let's pretend that's not true and let's think about the real thresholds. If we're talking about ideal comparators, this is pretty easy. It's just the parallel combination of resistors. And here's what that looks like. Notice how the parallel combinations are just a little bit smaller than the starting values. That's a really good sign. That's a sign that the math is working. I found that the trip thresholds vary between 0.47 and 0.48 volts, and this leads to a temperature threshold jumping between 94 and 97 degrees Celsius. The reference temperature is zero degrees here, which is why the delta works out to zero plus 97. We need to add the requisite factor of 272 degrees to convert from Kelvin to Celsius. I didn't think that was very necessary. I think you get the point. Now, if we'd like to consider the real output voltage, the real low output voltage for this equation, since I'm using an open collector comparator, this situation becomes a little more complex. See, we no longer have a perfect voltage divider, but we have a voltage divider with a little offset voltage on one leg. Now we need to apply either nodal or mesh analysis to build a system of equations for the circuit. I've done exactly that using the node method in this case, which is an application of Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm's law. What you see as a result is the impact of that 0.1 volts of the comparator output low voltage. If the low output voltage were actually 0.1 volts instead of zero, the threshold would become 0.474 volts instead of 0.473. Neat, right? 
it might seem insignificant, but this is the difference between 94.86 degrees Celsius and 94.9 degrees Celsius. Yeah, good thing we didn't neglect that error because if our house is going to burn down from that 0 0.04 degrees, uh, yeah, okay, that, that seems pretty insignificant. For something like a thermal runaway monitor, we're talking about tens or hundreds of degrees, not 0 0.04. Zero 04. I, I think this is probably fine, but it brings up a really good point. We can consider every tolerance. We can consider every single minute detail of every single circuit, but sometimes it really just doesn't matter. Sometimes course design decisions we make can cause other subtle nuances of the circuit, like the low output state voltage, neglectable. If that's done, we might not need to spend the time to do the more advanced analysis. It can be done. It's not even that difficult after you've done it once or twice at least. But it's just not always necessary. Bring out the big guns when you need them and keep it simple when appropriate. When we finish our schematic for Seth and release these design files, I think you'll find this comparator circuit appearing many multiple times throughout. It's one of those fundamental building blocks that has a way of showing up in everything from satellites to toasters. It's pretty cool how many different applications use comparators. That's all I have for today, but if you like this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. Coming up soon, we'll be discussing voltage reference selection and calculate the overall tolerance of Seth's ability to measure temperature. I can't wait! If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we feature today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It really helps us out a lot. Thank you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching and eat for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.